Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you um, a TNA video. Yes, that's right. I said a TNA video. If you haven't noticed, I have not given you a TNA review since I think I talked about that TNA lost the television deal. Well, they're going to lose the television deal despite TV. Um, but the last time I actually talked about TNA was, I think, TNA Slammiversary 2014 predictions when I gave my predictions for that. Um, and yeah, so uh, I guess I'm here to give you a TNA uh, predictions. Why I stopped watching TNA? Because that's why. Why haven't I talked about TNA? Because I haven't watched TNA. I haven't watched TNA since like May or June or something. I don't even remember. It was like May, June-ish, kind of like around that time. And everything was just, was just bad. Everything was bad. Everything was thrown together. They didn't, all the feuds were just there. Um, they had that gay menagerie thing with uh, Mike Knox. They like to call him Knox, but it's Mike Knox. Um, the Freak and Crazy Steve and, um, Rebel, that was gay. That was awful. And, um, they threw MVP, Bobby Lashley, and, uh, Kenny Ken in a group, which I didn't think was that bad. But, it felt like that was kind of like the main feud of the show. Um, everything, you know, he was just there. Um, Eric Young, I didn't mind him as a world champion, to be honest with you, but the feud he was, ha the feud he was having wasn't that great. Um, Bully Ray was stuck in this, like, Dixie Carter feud where he wanted to put her through a table, and I didn't think that was going to go anywhere. Luckily, it did, but I'll talk about that soon. And then, um, what else happened? Um, uh, EC3 and Rockstar Spud, that was awful stuff. It was just, it was just bad stuff. I didn't care about TNA. Uh, but now I'm here to talk to you about TNA. And they had the Willow thing with Jeff Hardy when he was Willow. That was bad. Um, but, um, I'm going to talk about what's going on with TNA, and then, um, I'll give you my, uh, and then I'll talk about TNA Bound for Glory 2014. Um, but, uh, I guess I'll talk about what's been going on with TNA. I gotta get something real quick. Um, I'll start off with, uh, I guess the World Championship scene. Um, at Slammiversary, I talked to you about that a little. Mr. Anderson defeated James Storm. Um, I didn't really care about that. That And he celebrated with the Dallas Cowboys afterwards. Uh, who cares? I didn't watch Slammiversary because I had better things to do, so that's why I'm talking to you about it now. I heard Manic... No, I heard Sonata defending his X Division Championship against, like, Manic... Um, the Wolves, which consist of Eddie Edwards and Davey Richards, um, Ty Gray Uno and a bunch of other people, um, and, and I heard that ladder match was pretty awesome, but we'll see, um, and then, um, I heard, uh, what else did I hear happen, um, Ethan Carter the third beat Bully Way. but I, I, I watched the highlights of this show and it looked to be tired in how he won, cause, uh, he couldn't get up from going off the apron through a table. When Bullyway was like, has, gone, has like fallen off ladder, a ladder through two tables. That's gay. Um, but anyhow, I also know that the Dudley Boys or Team 3D, which consists of Bullyway and Devon, um, and TNA, but the Dudley Boys, it's Bubba Ray Dudley and Devon Dudley, um, they're going to go into the TNA Hall of Fame. It's kind of a joke because they're still wrestling. I've said this before that when you have a TNA Hall of Fame, you're supposed to put people in that don't wrestle no more. And they put people in like Stin, um, who was still wrestling after that on a full-time basis. Um, Kurt Angle, who was still wrestling. Who's technically not wrestling, but he's still an, an active roster. And now they're going to put in Team 3D, who still wrestle. Um... But anyhow, uh, I think they deserve it, though. They were they were tag team champions pretty much everywhere in TNA, WWE, New Japan Pro Wrestling, stuff like that. They made the TLC match with Edge and Christian and the Hardy Boys, which consist of Je 
Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy. Um, and they've really, um, I really like the Dudley boys. They made tables, um, they made the tables match. They, that's like their, that's like their thin, that's their match. And they made that match. I mean, yeah, I'll admit that, uh, they put, that they're probably on, like, the best, they probably didn't, like, actually make it, but they were, like, the ones that, uh, really sold, make the tables match. They were the ones that creatively used the tables match, and, uh, that's why I thought it worked. Um, and they always, I think they started, like, the chant, when you hear someone say, we want tables, they started that chant. They even do this thing where both Bubba Ray Dudley would tell Devon, Devon, and he goes, what? And then he goes, get the tables, and they have awesome moves set, like the t like the 3D, um, that move when, uh, Bully, when uh, Bubba Ray Dudley will hold the guy in his legs, and then uh, Devon Dudley will go off the uh, top rope and uh, headbutt them in the groin. That's awesome, but I really think they deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. That's awesome that they're going in there, and uh, that's going to happen at Bound for Glory. Um, what else has been going on, though? Um, what else happened at Slammiversary? Um, there was and I remember that night, Eric Young was supposed to defend the World Heavyweight Championship against... Um, MVP, and, um, what's consi what stands for Montel Vontavious Porter, um, my grandfather always, like, says it weird, um, but, uh, MVP had gotten injured that night, so he couldn't wrestle, um, so instead they did, a, they did matches between Samoa Joe, they did a match between, the matches between Samoa Joe and Bobby Lashley, and Austin Aries and Kenny Kin, the winners of those matches, would get into the World Heavyweight Championship match, and it was going to be inside of a steel cage, and Bobby Lashley ended up beating Samoa Joe and uh, Austin Aries beat Kenny Kin. Um, and um, what happened was Eric Young ended up retaining because I, I heard he hit a power driver on Austin Aries for the win. But uh, I think that's all that really happened. If I'm missing anything, let me know. I didn't see the show, so I don't. Let me know. I'm a, actually, I can. What else happened? I can. I'll look it up real quick. Because that's it. Let's see what else happened. Let me think. So the wrestlers, by the way, though, that Sonata defeated to retain the X Division title was all Crazy Steve was also in it that ladder match. Uh, Magnus beat Willow. Probably wasn't anything special. Uh, the Von Erics. They had the Von Erics, Masho and Ross. I think they were like two young guys, and uh, they had Kevin Von Erich, which was awesome. And they beat the Bromans, which consists of Johnny, Jesse Gardos, um, and. DJZ, which is Zima Ion. I hate that he has that gimmick. I think Zima Ion's a really talented wrestler, and it sucks that he has to have this gimmick. And they won VA disqualification. Then afterwards, Angelina Love um, retained the Knockouts Championship against Gail Kim. Um, that's it. That's all that really. That's all else that happened. Um, then I'll, now I'm going to talk about after Slammiversary because that's I think where I. Kind of started getting good. Uh, James Storm and Mr. Anderson finished off their feud. James Storm beat Mr. Anderson in a match. It was... That feud wasn't even that good anyways. Uh, at least it was a step up from what Mr. Anderson was doing. But it wasn't that good. Um, but, uh... Um... Eric Young had defended the World Heavyweight Championship against Kenny Ken. And, um... Afterwards, MVP announced that uh, everybody would be kicked out of the arena. Um, like the everybody, even though technically T Taz and Mike Tanay were still doing commentary, and um, Bobby Lashley and Eric Young was going to defend the World Heavyweight Championship against Bobby Lashley, and Bobby Lashley won, and he became the new champion. Now they've shortened his name to Lashley. I don't know why, but they did. I wonder if they're trying to be like WWE, how they shortened Antonio Cesaro's name to Cesaro and Biggie Langston's name to Big E. Um, so I don't know what they're trying, what they're doing, but um, I, that's actually pretty cool because um, WWE is known to be racist, and it's true. This is a true statement. Um, they've never really had a black. World have you WWE champion WWE champion WWF champion uh, or WWF champion or WWE World Heavyweight champion? Uh, it was always 
the whites. Uh, it was always the whites, though. It was never really, uh, you know, all about... It, it's just, it, they were pretty much racist. You could say that, technically, the walk... Um, became champion but uh he's some he's like Samoan and the WWE likes Samoans and I think that they will they gave that a pass I think they would even say well the walk Samoan so it doesn't matter um they never had like an but they've never really had a black person hold the championship it was no not you could say that they hold the world title but I'm talking about the big championship because Booker T and Mark Henry did hold the world championship but I'm talking about the big championships like uh Like the WWE Championship. So I'm glad TNA followed through with that. Had, having Bobby Lashley hold a championship. Uh, I thought that was awesome. And um, he went on to, to defend the title. Um, with, in recent weeks. And I'll get to that. Um, and then Kurt Angle. Um, MVP got removed of being the director of operations. Which made sense. And Dixie Carter thought she was going to get a roll back. But it didn't happen. And um... So then uh, Kurt Angle is now the director of wrestling operations. He now is uh, in charge. So I thought that was pretty cool. It keeps him on TV because he uh, had a toy ACL or MCL. One of those two. So uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, what else happened? Um, I think anything. And then... Uh, Kurt Angle, um, Eric Young did get his rematch eventually for the title, but he lost it. And I actually mentioned there that Bobby Roode made his return, and he's a face now, because he had gotten suspended by MVP. Um, I remember seeing that TNA, but he got suspended by MVP, and they had a ball. That was awesome stuff. And now he's a face, and uh, at first I was like, I think Bobby Roode's a natural heel. I think he should be a heel, but I actually think he's pulling off being a baby face pretty well, and I think he's doing just fine. Um, it was a nice change up too, because he's been a heel for what? He was a heel since 2011 when he hit James Storm off the head with the beer bottle. So I'm glad he's a baby face now. Um, <coughs> and then, um, so he has been feuded with MVP though, um, and eventually it led to a street fight between those, no, a false count anywhere match between those two, and Bobby Roode had won. By a Texas Cloverleaf. Um, or the shop No, I think it was the sharpshooter, actually. He won with the sharpshooter. Because MVP tapped out. Because um, he... And... Then, uh... What else can I mention? Uh, they went back to the six-sided win. They had a six-sided win before. So instead of a typical win, they have a six-sided win. Which I don't think is a bad thing. Because... Makes TNA uh, the own company. The own identity. But, uh... That kind of looks like a strange, but I think you'd get used to it if you would watch it every week. Um, they had a battle royal to go, to then the winner, and uh, they would go on to face uh, Bobby Lashley at the next week to face um, for the world title. And uh, Kurt Angle had Willow come out, and um, what Je he talked about how uh, Jeff Hardy had to go to this dark place. Um, because of Dixie Carter and MVP and everything that was going on, but you can trust me. So he wanted Jeff Hardy. He wanted Willow to work the battle royal with Jeff Hardy, which he did. So, so Jeff Hardy is Jeff Hardy again. He didn't end up beating Lashley for the title though. Lashley retained, and then um, the next week Jeff Hardy talked about how Willow's not gone forever, but just for now. And then um, he brought back Matt Hardy. So the Hardy boys reformed, and they want to hold the tag team championships. One more time, which I thought was awesome. So at Destination X, they faced uh, the Wolves for the Tag Team Championships. And uh, the Wolves retained. I wish, I can't find that match anywhere. I tried to go see it, but I couldn't find it. Um, but I thought that was awesome that they hold it, that um, we got that match. It was like a dream match. Um, I'll talk to you more what they do with them later. Then uh, Austin Aries had beaten Sonata for the X Division Championship. So he was able to cat. They have that you know option C. If you're the X Division champion, you can cash it in and become the new uh, and for a shot at the world title. So Austin Aries cashed it in on Bobby Lashley and he failed. He was actually I think the first one to fail, which is kind of strange because the one that created option C failed. Um, 
Then, um, anything else important? Then they, I'll talk about the Dixie Carter situation. How they were feuding with, uh, Bo Bully Ray. Um, Dixie Carter, um, had a confrontation with Tommy Dreamer because they were saying bad stuff about each other on Twitter, which was scripted. So, uh, Tommy Dreamer talked to you, t said you should need to be this little girl wrestling fan that you once were before. We brought back Hardcore Justice. You brought the old ECW uh, roster in. And uh, Tommy Dreamer at and Dixie Carter hugged Tommy Dreamer. And we thought at first we're thinking that uh, Dixie Carter was going to turn face. But she low blowed Tommy Dreamer. And then uh, the next week, um, Bully Ray and uh, Ethan Carter the third had a tables match. And Rhino came out. And t he came out as a heel. He joined up with Dixie Carter and Dixie and EC3 won the table match, which I didn't think it was a bad thing. It was a nice surprise that Rhino turned on uh, Bully Way. I didn't think it was that bad. Um, it was all right, I guess. Um, and then um, what else happened? Uh, Tommy Dreamer and EC3 had a brawl in the locker room. And I think Team 3D and Tommy Dreamer had a match at one point. It was like a hardcore match with Ethan Carter the third, Rockstar Spud. Surprise that. I completely forgot about that guy. And Rhino. And these two guys with hoods came out and attacked um, Bully Ray. And um, Ethan, that, that allowed EC3, Rhino, and Rockstar Spud to get the win. And we found out that these guys were... Uh, Ezekiel Jackson and Gene Snitsky, which I thought was awesome, and they even referenced them as their names. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. I thought Ezekiel Jackson was still in the WWE. I thought I just thought he was like injured or something, but no, I guess he, Ezekiel Jackson's not in the WWE anymore. I knew Snitsky was gone, but surprise, Ezekiel Jackson was gone. I thought he was still in the company. Um, and it led to like a big match. It was like a gauntlet. It was um, hardcore rules match. And it was uh, Team 3D, Tommy Dreamer, and um, Al Snow versus Ezekiel Jackson, Gene Snitsky, Ethan Carter the Third, Rhino, and Rockstar Spud. I think I'm missing someone, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Bully Ray's Team 3D's Team 1. And at the end of the night, uh, Team Bully Ray tried to put Dixie Carter through the table because that was like his goal. And then um, Dixie Carter tried to escape. She actually ended up, by the way, too, firing um, Ezekiel Jackson and Snitsky, which then it led to nothing. And then, um, Bully, and Kid Mo was with her, too. Kid Mo, was, it was all like a big faction. Um, but, um, Bully Way, uh, the, the locker room came out and wanted to see Dixie Carter get put through the table, so Bully Way finally put Dixie Carter through the table. I think they dragged out that storyline way too long. It was like from March all the way to like August or something. That's way too long to drag out a storyline, I think. That didn't really need to be done. It was like that CM Punk Paul Heyman feud. They dragged that out way too long. I'm gonna get my hands on Paul Heyman, yeah. And he finally did it, but he should. They should have just scrapped that angle. But they, and the, the same thing here. I'm gonna put Dixie Carter through a table. What else happens? Uh, I'm going to talk about James Storm and what's been going on with him. Um, him and Sonata were having, like, a feud. And um, James Storm wanted, like, to see, like, this an like this anger brought out in Sonata. I don't really know a lot about this. And um, he wanted, like, to see Sonata get angered or something. And then um, James Storm... Um, Had confronted the great Muda, who was like Sonata's mentor. Um, and, um, Sonata, uh, and the great Muda, I think, had beaten, it was either DJ Z or Robbie E, I forget which one. And, um, James Storm was going to attack, uh, the great Muda, but then Sonata came out with a chair to make the save, and when, um, the Great Muda went to like stand up on the stage to have a face off. Sonata hit the Great Muda with in the back with a chair and did a moonsault to him and walked out and bowed to James Storm. I, it gets better. This is actually pretty awesome shit. Um, 
And, um... They did, like, these vignettes where Sonata was tied up and James Storm um, was trying to, like, get him to preach, trying to teach him, um, trying to get, like, this inner Sonata to come out of him. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? Um, the next week, the Great Sonata had a match with um, Austin Aries. Cause now they call him the Great Sonata. Um, and he comes out and he's, like, painted just like the Great Muda. And he uses the mist... Uh, on Austin Aries, and he kicked him in the head, and he got the victory. This was awesome, though. Um, James Storm, though, is uh, this is exactly like the Wyatt family angle that they're doing with WWE. The Wyatt family consists of Boy Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan, except because uh, James Storm even did Boy Wyatt's taunt that he usually does. So, but I think this is actually pretty good stuff, though. Uh, I don't really mind this. Um, and uh, this is awesome. Um, and the next week, the Great Sonata and James Storm defeated um, Austin Aries, and he had a tag team partner named Tajiri, which was awesome to see him. Um, I've seen him in a couple matches on the computer before on YouTube. Um, and then uh, Manic, or Suicide, whatever you want to call him. I hate that he's Manic now. Uh, and that uh, when he cuts his promos, it's off. he has his mask off, so what's the point of having a mask? Um... And Manic had lost some sort of match. It was like to get an X Division Championship match. Um, speaking of which, Samoa Joe, since Austin Aries, I should mention, cashed in the X Division title, they had to vacate it. And Samoa Joe uh, defeated the Great Sonata and uh, Low Key or Caval, I think that's who it was. And he's he was he's the X Division champion now, which isn't that bad. Um, Cause there's no tele, there's no real mid card. Cause the television championships vacant now. Was like retired now. He, uh, Kurt Angle retired it. I don't know why, but he did. Um, and uh, but anyhow, uh, Manic had like lost a shot at the X Division title, and he was laid out on the floor. And James Storm and the Great Sonata came out and like dragged him backstage. And James Storm did the same thing that he did with the Great Sonata, except he did it with Manic now, and he tried to whip his mask off. This was awesome. And, uh, after Samoa Joe had defeated, what's his name, Homicide, to retain his X Division Championship, uh, the great Sonata and James Storm came out and attacked both of them, and who, Manic came out, and now he has new in attire, it actually looks pretty awesome, you should see it, um, and, uh, now he's with, like, James Storm, this is like a cult, a group, between James Storm, the great Sonata, and Manic, I think this is awesome, and, uh, it's, I'll talk about more what's going on with the Bound for Glory. Um, e, and Rockstar Spuds are face now. Ethan Carter the third blamed him for the reason Dixie Carter got put through a table. So Rockstar Spud is now uh, in the uh, now a face. I think he got laid out by Brodus Clay because uh, Brodus Clay ended up getting released from WWE. So now he's in TNA, which isn't a bad thing, I guess. Um... Team 3D, um, or the Dudley Boys, um, and the Hardy Boys and the Wolves have been having, like, a three-way kind of thing. Uh, I think, uh, the Hardys won the first match. No. Who won the first? I think the Hardys won the first match. The Dudleys won. They all have a win, pretty much. And I think they were going to finish it up. But then, um, one of the Wolves got injured. And, uh, they had to, I guess, drop the tag team straps. Um... And I'm going to get into that in, Bound for Glo in the Bound for Glory show. So now, uh, what anything else I need to mention? Um, Kurt Angle, I think I heard his contract expired. And he's no longer with TNA. And I heard Bully Ray is going to leave TNA now. So I wonder if he's now. I wonder if we're going to see both of them in WWE now. That would be pretty awesome. Because uh, Kurt Angle, I feel like, uh, needs to go back to WWE one more time. Just doesn't It doesn't really feel like he's himself... Uh, when he's in TNA, so I think uh, he should go to WWE. He can be himself, um, and he can have like great matches with like Daniel Bryan, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, uh, maybe even Roman. Just anybody, anyone you put Kurt Angle in a match with is just it's a gold match. Um, so I hope that happens, and I hope the Dudley Boys go back to WWE because I like to see them feud with the Usos, um, Jimmy and Jay. Uh, that'd be awesome. And, uh, gold and Stardust, that'd be cool. But uh, we'll see what happens. I think that's about it. Uh, they did some uh, they did some Samuel Shaw stuff since then, but I don't really want to talk about that. That's all just 
Uh, shit. Um, I think that's about it. So I'm going to give you my uh, TNA Bound for Glory 2014 uh, predictions. Um, to be honest with you, this show, look, because it's in Japan, and I think they uh, worked out some sort of deal with where uh, they worked out some sort of deal with uh, the Great Muda because he runs a company called Wrestle One. So I think all, a, a lot of his uh, Japanese stars are in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, it doesn't even feel like a TNA pay-per-view, it feels more like a, uh, Wrestle 1 pay-per-view, with, uh, that some TNA wa making special appearances. I understand it's in Japan, you gotta, it's cool to win the Japan guys, and all the guys, and all, they're gonna get a big pop, because the fans know who they are, but still, you gotta get your own guys, they don't even have the champion, because Bobby Roode's the champ, because he beat Bobby Lashley, and he's not even on the show. Um, and I don't, I mean, that's kind of a bad thing, because this is like one of the biggest shows of the year, and you don't have your champion on it, that's not a good thing. Um, because Brock Lesnar, I know it's not going to be in Hell in a Cell, but it's not like a big pay-per-view, so it wouldn't be lost. I still would be, I would be, I would still be trashing it if he wasn't going to be on Survivor Series, because that's one of the big shows, so I think Bobby Roode should be on the show. Um, they don't really... They don't have really any of the superstars on the show, really. They don't have uh, Bobby Lashley, Kenny Ken. They don't have any, really, of the TNA. It's only a, a handful, um, which I think is awful. But uh, So the build-up, I just pretty much went through all that for nothing. I should mention, by the way, too, that they have this new girl named Havoc now who just has been wreaking destruction. She's been destroying people in battle royals and stuff, and I think she's like the current Knockouts champion. Um, and I think she beat Gail Kim for it, because Gail Kim had beaten Velvet Sky, and she's the champ now, so that's good stuff, uh, and I'll talk about that more, and I like Havoc, she's not that bad, and they have this new wrestler too named Chris Melendez, who was in, like, the war, and he has, he's like, uh, um, Zach Gowan, where we had that fake leg with him, because, uh, of what happened. Because if something happened in the war that made this happen. So he wrestles now. And he was feuding with MVP and his group. And uh, Mr. Anderson came out and made the save. So, But anyhow, that's it for the TNA thoughts. I'm going to get into the uh, the TNA Bound for Glory card. Which it might still be good. because, um, But I've never seen any of these guys wrestle before. So I don't know how good they are. But it still could be good. I'll, I'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but we have a tag team match, and it's Andy Wee, I don't know how to, th these are Japanese names, so I don't know how to pronounce them correctly, Andy Wu or something, it's W-U, and L. Hijo, um, Del Pantera, um, versus Novus, which consists of Jiro, Kuro, Shui, Shuo, I don't know, and, uh, Yosuka Kodama. This is a, a weird name, but, uh, that's the name. And, um, I'll just pick, uh, Novus, since they're probably more of a legit tag team or something, I don't know. I can't really give an answer because, uh, I don't know any of these wrestlers. Um, and, uh, we haven't... Havoc defending the TNA Knockouts Championship against Velvet Sky. And I thought Velvet Sky was a heel, but maybe that's not the case anymore. Or it's just maybe this is just two heels going at it. Or maybe Havoc just doesn't care who she faces. She just wants to destroy anybody. I'm going to pick Havoc to retain because she's just... From what I've been seeing, she's been on a, a tear lately. And uh, I want to see her continue this tear. I would think that would be awesome. Um, so Havoc retains the uh, knock, TNA Knockouts Championship. And then we have Manic versus Minorui Tanka. I don't know how to say his name. It's um, uh, I guess Manic because uh, he's in that new mainly because I don't know who the other guy is, but uh, he's in that new James Storm feel to him. He uh, has that cult with behind him, so I think they should show that he has changed and beat him here, not isolate him, but just kill him. So I think that would be awesome. And then we have because. Kazme Sakamoto. That's uh, Sakamoto who used to be with uh, Lord Tensai when uh, Lord Tensai first started. 
Um, now he's known as Jason Albert um, in the in the WWE, and he's facing off against MVP. Uh, I guess MVP. Um, I mean, I bet this match might be good, but MVP I just think will win. MVP I think has probably worked with this guy before because he used to be in New Japan Pro Wrestling, so maybe this guy has gone to that company before, so that could be good. And then we get Team 3D or the Dudley Boys, which consists of Bully Ray and Devon versus Abyss and Tommy Dreamer. Random match, but I think this was supposed to be the Wolves, but and I read that te- but since one of the Wolves got injured, the Team 3D had to take their spot. And tonight they're gonna get inducted. Then tomorrow they're gonna get inducted into the Hall of Fame too, which would be bad. I guess Team 3D, they're more of a, of a legit tag team. I think they should just win. Um, and I like Team 3D better, so why not? I mean, Abyss and Tommy Dreamer just seems like a random tag team. Um, and then we have Ethan Carter the third versus Wotia Hama. Ethan Carter the third. I don't think he's lost a match yet. Um, so why don't I continue the undefeated streak? If he has though, I'm still picking him. Uh, I really don't know though where it's gonna go. Um, and then we have a, a tag team match that I'm actually looking forward to. The Great Muto and Tajiri versus James Storm and the Great Sonata. I can't wait to see this match, actually. Uh, this match has been built up awesome with the Great Sonata betraying the Great Muto and James Storm taking in the Great Sonata under his win. And I think this should be awesome stuff. And I think James Storm and the Great Sonata should win this match because um, James Storm um, and the Great Sonata, I think, are, should be dominant. They should make this group between James Storm, the Great Sonata, and Manic. A dominant group and have them all go over tonight. I think that would be awesome. I, w- I wouldn't complain. And then we have, I guess, that what's going to be the main event. Samoa Joe defending the X Division Championship against Loki or Koval, um And Kaz Hashi. Um, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Samoa Joe, I guess, retains. Um, why not, right? Yeah, that's my TNA Bound for Glory predictions. A lot of the matches aren't. I can't really, I'm sorry, I can't really give, like, a full and depth like, look in the matches, but I don't know most of the wrestlers that are going to be on the show, uh, because I don't watch Wrestle 1, um, mainly because it's probably not on TV where I am, but, uh, well, I'll just go through the matches again. I feel like that Novice is going to be Andy Yu and Eli Hijo Del Pantera, um, I put like that... Havoc is going to defend and retain the Knockouts Championship against Velvet Sky. Uh, Manic's going to be Manuo Tonka. Uh, MVP is going to be Kazma Sakamoto. Um, Team 3D is going to be Abyss and Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Ethan Carter the third is going to be Wotia Hama. Um, James Storm and the Great Sonata is going to beat the Great Muda and Tajiri. And... Samoa Joe is going to be gonna, gonna defend and retain his X Division Championship against Loki and Kaz Hash Hayashi or something. Um, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna say this now that if this TNA Bound for Glory is absolute shit, I'm not even gonna. Um, I'm never gonna watch T. I won't watch TNA probably until the next pay per view. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe never again. Then because uh. TNA, it doesn't, who knows if they're even going to have a television deal by the end of the point, so, by this t- time, so, who knows what's going to happen, they just lost pretty much all the loss, they lost Kurt Angle, they lost, they lost Bully Ray, so, who knows what's going to happen, but, we'll see, uh, that's pretty much it, guys, I'll re- do a review tomorrow, but, don't expect me, I don't know how the show's going to be, so that's pretty much it, guys, peace out.